Thank you so much for joining me today on the Small Business Hustle. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about some, just some kind of random topics around the idea of a total town makeover. Uh, so it's a little bit of um, a business wrapped in with community today. And we're going to also be talking about um, the challenges with connecting and collaborating. Just really be thinking about that because that's what's on my mind and I want to share it with you today. Welcome, welcome to the Small Business Hustle. And hello, hello, I'm Molly B, your host and owner of MJ's Market, a small general store in South Dakota. This is a weekly podcast where we discuss operating a small business. Okay, so before we jump in, I wanted to share a quote. I found this online. Uh, This one is um, by Jim Quick, and it is, Don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. Wow. I was, that one was way better than like any of the other ones I've shared recently in my mind because it's like, I really take people's criticism to heart. Uh, But wait a minute, I wouldn't even take advice from these people. Why am I worried about um, them critiquing me and saying that what I'm doing is not good enough or what I'm doing is not um, not where it should be, that, that I'm imperfect? Um, why would I accept that criticism? And uh, so the answer is I shouldn't. Uh, and I'm, so I'm going to be working on that uh, so that I can be a happier person and realize that there just are bullies out there. Uh, so today, um, jumping into some um, topics about bullies. I also want to share uh, a, a book I've read um, and an author that I was very excited uh, that I, I saw. And so we just let's dive in. Okay, uh, so the book is called The Total Town Makeover. This is by Andrew McRae. And he was a speaker uh, for something that I went to for um, our South Dakota Retailers Association. So he came and he did a talk and he had really fun um, setup. He had a bunch of street signs that helped drive his point home, which was super, super fun. And I really enjoyed his talk. And uh, at the end of the show, he offered um, for us to have two of his books for free. And then he had his new book, which was called The Total Town Makeover, um, also available for sale. And um, that was the one I really wanted. I haven't read his other books yet, but I really wanted The Total Town Makeover because that was mostly what he talked about. And I jumped right away on YouTube to devour any of the content that he ha- had out there. And so in this Total Town Makeover book, uh, it w- the thing that was just absolutely fascinating to me, um, really in his speech is, is where I got so excited about this, is all of the examples he was coming up with. And he was talking about how these towns had done a makeover were like these really small towns. I mean, these were like towns of a couple hundred, uh, some of them, you know, 1,800. Um, you know, 300. I mean, whatever you, you want to throw out all these numbers, he has examples from all these really small towns. And um, if you've listened, you already know I'm in a town of about um, 5,600, I think, or so five to 6,000 people. Uh, and, and then there's a good farming and ranching community around us. And then we are about 11 miles from a town um, that is larger um, in a different county. And I just, oh man, I was like, We've got a lot of people. This, this, he's talking micro towns, you know, he's talking about really small town America and these fascinating things that they're doing to help revive their towns and prevent them from becoming ghost towns. And here we are in this bigger town and we're just bickering it out over and over again. And we're having incredible growth. And are we doing something amazing to build ourselves up and make ourselves even better? And I, I would say the answer is probably mostly no. I don't want to minimize the things that we are doing because there are a lot of really great things. But in general, I would say that our town struggles um, with the connect and collaborate that I love. Uh, I just think it's so helpful. Like we can all lift each other up. Rising tides rise all ships. And (laughs) I had a really smart comment said to me uh, when I when I said that and they said, well, unless there's a hole in the boat. And it was like, oh, my gosh, yes. There are definitely some holes in the boats around town, and I think we just need to stop worrying about them dragging us down 
They can bail water all day if they're not going to fix their uh, holes in their boat. We are going to keep trudging forward. And so that that was really, it was kind of helpful. Like they were kind of putting like a negative twist on this uh, quote that I so loved. But like it also made me kind of tilt my head and go, okay, yeah, I need to stop worrying about them dragging me down because there's not a hole in my boat. <laughs> so, all right. So let's talk about uh, the Total Town Makeover a little bit. I'm going to try uh, to not get too overly excited and stay on track with this. So uh, in the book, he has a whole bunch of examples of these really fascinating things that these towns have done. Uh, there was a town in Nebraska that raised $8 million, and the, the population's around 300. So uh, they use that money to revitalize their town. Um, they take the interest off that money, and they give it out every year in um, grants um, and, and grant matching funds. And they're able to really make this impact. It's just fascinating to me. Uh, another town that I just, I had heard of because I love sewing and I love quilting. Um, and so I had already known about the company. Okay. So the company is um, the Miss Missouri Star Quilt. So I was already familiar with with the town or the, I guess, excuse me, the business. But um, the town is Hamilton. And so they, um, this quilt shop brings um, an estimated six to 8,000 additional people to Hamilton each month. Um, now, not every visitor is a quilter, but people um, need a place to eat, sleep, and fuel up with gas and sacks for a road trip, is what he says in his book. And so, it, honestly, um, I am fascinated when I read in here the the town has uh only 1809 people um according to his book that's how many people are in this town of Hamilton and so so we've got this big quilt company and um 6 to 8000 additional people come each month now i want you to guess how many people um are there working at Missouri Star Quilt Company so um oh and Missouri Star Quilt Company owns 11 stores on the town's main street each with its own theme, okay? So how many people does it employ um, in a town of 1,809? The answer is 250 people. 250 people work at this place. It's like fascinating. Think of the ripple that that business is making in the economic makeup of that area. You know, the fact that this small, small town, I mean, our town, I said five, 6,000 people, okay? Like, this is a town of less than 2,000 people, and they employ 250 people at a wilt shop, a dying industry, right? That's what people would say. Uh, so it's just fascinating to me the kind of impact and the kind of ripple that these things can do. Okay, now here's another example that, that he shares. Uh, Calico Rock, Arkansas was down to the last business on Main Street. So uh, he says the town museum board raised funds to buy a building and put a business in it. Today, they own seven buildings and only two storefronts are unoccupied. So this is fascinating. I think somewhere this might have been the town. Then they started selling them after the businesses were um, growing. They, they took the business and they sold it. And then that way they were able to recycle those funds into the next project to kind of help build up and um, make the um, make the town even better. Uh, there's a whole bunch of examples like this. I just am absolutely fascinated at the idea. Uh, there's a town that he talks about in North Dakota that they like just how they decided to revitalize and and what they decided to do. And again, another micro town, tons of really great things. If you're not really into reading, I can say the book is crazy good read for only, it's only 100 pages. So it's not, you know, it's not like a giant book. You don't have to be obsessed with reading to, to be okay with it. So it's, it's just about 100 pages. And um, if you don't want to read, there are little videos on YouTube. And you can watch each one of these examples of these um, town makeover examples if that's the thing you really want. And so he has a checklist. So here's a makeover checklist. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to accomplish a total town makeover, but I find there are some common set steps successful towns often make. Okay, so these are his checklists. 
does your town have an endowment or other sources of funding that can provide seed money for projects or matching funds for grants? And so that is really fascinating. Um, that's what the um, the Stick, Stickney, I think it is, Nebraska. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. They th- So they created this endowment fund and they put the money in the local bank because they didn't want their local bank to go out of business. And so they wanted the bank to have money in the bank that they could loan out to people. And then what they did is they just take the interest every year off of that endowment fund and they um, give it out to projects. So they'll either match grants if somebody gets a grant or they'll help if they're going to revitalize a storefront or start a business or something like that. So they have all these different things that that help to continue to propel this town forward and make it relevant. Uh, And then um, they say, do you have one group leading the way or are separate groups pulling in different directions? This is 100 percent the town I live in. Uh, it doesn't matter what corner you go to, you will see this um, divide mentality. If somebody doesn't make you happy, if somebody doesn't do what you want, there is no give, absolutely no give. We are not given at all. And beyond that, um, we're just going to start our own thing. And so we're we're all taking all of these efforts and instead of running in the same direction, we're pulling away from each other. And I mean, th- in a lot of ways, this is exactly what's going on in our country as well. Like with our politics, it's just such a mess. And it's just, it's not a positive and happy place. Like you can't have a thought that differs from someone else's or they are, you are enemy number one. And I think that's really sad because, um, you know, our enemies shouldn't be our neighbors. Even if they have different thoughts than us, that's not, that's not our enemy. They, they, he suggests to try to form a coordinating group or clearly define what each group hopes to accomplish. Uh, so I, I feel like um, one of the things that might work in our town, and I will check back in with you, um, you know, in time to see if I can get something like this pulled off, is the idea of an influencer group, um, a group of people that come together. It's not its own group in any way, but it takes leaders in the town, and we all come up with... Um, coordinating things that we can have an impact on. So maybe one person is a board of directors on one group. Maybe one person volunteers for something else. Uh, maybe someone else is, um, you know, part of a big employer in the area. And so how can we get all of these groups kind of nudged in the same direction in a way that we can have that good influence on them? Okay. Uh, does the community have short and long-term goals? Have those goals been written down and presented to the public? People want to have an idea of the vision and goals before they buy in. And then are you using the newspaper and social media to communicate? Provide progress updates, show pictures, build momentum. Social media allows you to connect with people who might not live nearby or have a connection to the town and support your efforts. And then um, the final one is to improve the town's culture by making a commitment to smile more and a commitment to praise others. It might be a specific person or group that lead the way in building a positive or proactive culture. Uh, So those are things that I think are really fascinating about this book. Again, it's The Total Town Makeover um, by Andrew McRae. He says, rethinking um, business, community, and home in small town America. So those that is something that I, I really love that book. I love what he has to say about that. And I love the examples that he's plucked out because they are so inspirational and they help you know, those critics, they help to drown them out because I can say, no, there are examples of where there's been something really fascinating that's been done. And if you don't want to be a part of that, that is fine. But you're not going to take it away from me and the other positive people who want to see these things happen. Um, Another example in his book that I uh, found really um, very enlightening is that he talks a lot about there's a specific community that brings in their young people. So they basically were really worried that their population was aging and that there was not any young families um, coming back to community or they, they, they weren't feeling like they could be there. And so they, they had a concerted effort to work on that. And then they also focused on bringing youth into these groups um, in order to make decisions. So this kind of goes into that that problem that that we all have. So if we want to talk about... um. If we want to talk about the community I'm in, okay? And so I feel like there is this problem where we can't allow 
other people to have a good idea if we have failed ourselves. So the idea that their idea would succeed and mine failed can't happen. And so they take it too personally. And instead of saying, you know what, mine didn't work, but let's try your idea. Let's all run together in the same direction on that and see if we can make that happen. So so because we can't allow someone else's, we just tear them down from the start. We don't allow that to be an amazing thing. We don't allow it to grow or to ripen, nothing. We're just like, we are going to stomp that down immediately because I have failed. So I want to make sure you have failed too. And, and, and maybe that's just a really negative look on that. But I just, I can't justify any other reason for people to be so detrimental to others. Like I can't, I can't think of any other positive reason for them to just tear them down unless they want to be bullies. And maybe they are. Maybe that's just it. Maybe they're just big bullies and they don't care whose idea it is. They're going to equally bully. Um, so, so the thing is, is that because there are not personal feelings involved, when you bring youth into the equation, I think it does a lot of things. I think, number one, people have to act a certain way. They have to be a little bit more appropriate, a little bit more adult-like when there is, you know, let's say we bring in like a junior um, you know, a, a junior um, board member, and they are going to sit on the board. And so now all of a sudden, we can't be doing the same kind of clicky gossip. It's not acceptable to be doing that in front of, you know, a high school student or a middle school student. We have to kind of lift ourselves up a little. And I know it's sad to think that way, but I mean, it, it's the truth. You know, there are some gossipy, weird things that happen in these small towns and if all of a sudden we have a little bit more accountability in the fact that we don't want to look like a jerk in front of this child, maybe we'll act a little bit better. But but that's not the point he gets to. That's me. That's me being my jaded self. So he talks about it in a way that he says, you know, these ideas that these kids have are really, uh, they're new and they, they, they're, they're bright and they're fresh and they're thinking of these fun ideas. And so also... They feel so a part of their community if you make something that they do come to action. So now all of a sudden, they're so much more invested in their communities. And it's a place that even though they leave to go get an education, um, they want to come back because this is something that they're connected to. So it just kind of helps deepen those roots for those um, young people to help bring them back to the community. And yeah, not everybody's going to come back. But when you have almost no one coming back, that's the problem that these small towns face and pretty soon they age out and and they they die, you know. Um okay, so the other thing that I found that I love is there's a town in South Dakota. Um it's right on the interstate. Um and it so so location is really good because it's also right on the river. So you've got um the Missouri River right there and they are giving away lots in town. You, they're just giving them away. Now, the people have to do some certain things to get these lots, and part of it is to build on them, but it is just absolutely lovely, and I hope that they have a huge success with that. I hope that this town um, is able to, you know, really get some positivity from um, bringing these people in, and so uh, the town is Pukwana, and it is, um, I believe it's around 300 people in the town, 300-something, you know, uh, not 100% sure on that. But anyways, um, so I just, I love the idea um, that they are going to do that. Let's see, the census was, oh, it was only 233 in the 2020 census. So um, so they've dropped even more. So 233 people. And so what they are doing is they are giving away, um, I think it was four lots. They're offering free housing lots to attract new residents. And so... Um, yeah, so they've got this, they've got a lot of really good things going for them as far as um, the fishing that is available in that area. Um, I'm sure there's really great hunting in the area. This is um, definitely a few hours away from me. So I can't, I can't say for sure, you know, wh what that's like. But anyways, they, they say in this article, uh, we encourage anyone who is interested in this opportunity to apply. We have multiple jobs open between Pequana and Chamberlain, including over 40 positions that pay 30000 to 120000 including full benefits. This free lot program is a great new incentive for a family to take a job and move to our area. 
Uh, so I just I love this so much. This is an example of how they are trying to do a total town makeover and how people are working together to kind of figure this out and go, wow, look, at we have 40 jobs available um, in this small area. And um, that town only has 233 people. It's it's really a neighboring to uh, Chamberlain. So they, I, I don't know what their population is, but they're both right there. So uh, the the whole area population might be a little bit different. But I just I think there's so many great things when we think about the endowment fund going back to that. You know, somebody was like, well, how could you how could you, uh, you know, get this this money raised? And it's like. I, I could start popping off ideas so fast that the the problem would be vetting the ideas for uh, the the actual benefit versus the amount that they would take. Um, you know, there's talented people all over in communities. Um, you could consider paying a band and and having an event where people could come and listen to the music and maybe dance. Or you could skip the band and do it more of like a talent contest. Um, so maybe the participants have to pay to get in. And then that way you can take that uh, money and, and give it back to a winner. Uh, maybe not all of it, maybe um, a couple of them. And then the people who want to come to the talent show also pay to come to the talent show. And all of that money that is left over um, gets cycled into this endowment fund. Another example would be uh, having a community garage sale. I think uh, everyone would admit that the amount of work it takes to do a garage sale is like astronomical. So now all of a sudden, if we say, okay, we're going to get a bunch of our youth groups together and they are going to help us put on a massive city garage sale, we're going to take up a big building. We're going to uh, get all of the things, the donations. Maybe we even go and do a day where we go pick stuff up. People just have it ready. We go pick it up. And then we go put all the stuff in this uh, community hall and we all mark it. And then we have volunteers for small shifts who are able to, you know, you could do all sorts of things. You could let them shop early and that's the payment for volunteering. So they, they volunteer, but then they get early look at all of the things. So they get first pick out of the things. There's like a volunteer hour or something. And then uh, they just volunteer four hour shifts or something like that. And you have this great uh, garage sale. So you got your product for free and then you get the money and now you can take that money and you can put it into um, that endowment fund, you know. And and so there's so many little things like that that could be um, taken advantage of in order to get that endowment fund rolling. And then from there, that endowment fund can really get put back into the community um, in order to kind of make things bigger and the the snowball will just keep getting bigger and bigger and rolling in that positive direction. All right, so how are you going to make this total town makeover happen? Uh, okay, I'm I'm going to say one thing that's really important is at the start, you probably don't need a ton of people uh, to either have a meeting or a buy-in session. Uh, let's say you were going to have a really big meeting. You're going to get the community hall booked. You're going to invite tons of people. Somehow you get a ton of engagement in that. And so all these people show up and they are ready to have this this meeting. The challenge with this is that you might not need all of those people. What you want to do when you get started is you want people who are leaders, who are influential in the community, who are involved in different organizations, who maybe have ties to the school, who maybe have ties to the Chamber of Commerce or other business organizations. Um, you know, real leaders in what they do. Uh, is the the more the focus of what you want versus the um you know maybe the the mass groups of people because in in some ways I think you might even invite more naysayers uh, than if you had a small collaborative group that can really put their heads together and carve out a plan. Um, we can skip the group think problem. We can just get together and we can all kind of hash out and discuss a good way forward. And then once you've done that, part of your way forward can be communicating to more people. So just keep that in mind. Um, it isn't necessarily about getting the entire community to buy in all at the beginning. Um, it's more about figuring out your vision and your purpose for your total town makeover and what goals you want to accomplish. Uh, with a smaller group of in influential people who are able to then help spread that message and light that fire in all of the different places. And then from there, part of your uh, goals and strategies can be a campaign of awareness to get more people excited about it and bought in. 
But if you start with all those people at the beginning, you aren't going to have your picked out leaders helping guide the way and helping kind of, um, you know, define what it is you're doing, really leading. You're not going to have that. So uh, I just keep in mind, it's it's really important to kind of think about that in, in the book, um, that the Total Town Makeover book um, by Andrew McRae, he talks about the number of people you need in an organization to incite that change and uh, just briefly touches on it. So that might be something else that um, reading something about change uh, maybe will be a path I head next. So thank you so much for joining me today and discussing uh, ways that we can have a positive influence on our communities and have a total town makeover. And go ahead and spread some positivity this week, and I'll catch you again. Thank you for joining me this week on the Small Business Hustle. I would love to hear your feedback so I can better serve you. And don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week where we'll continue to talk about small business. If you found value in this podcast, you can show your support by sharing our podcast with your audience and your friends. We appreciate you and please spread some positivity today. I promise it will do you wonders. Ha, ha, ha.